standing next to the femur bone of a woolly mammoth. Today, we can easily identify it as remains of that prehistoric beast, but imagine if you were an early American farmer who found this while plowing your fields. Since you had never heard of a mammoth, much less a woolly one, you wouldn't be able to label this correctly. What you have heard, however, is the local folklore about monsters who live in the nearby woods. Given all the available data, the only logical conclusion would be that this is proof of the existence of monsters. Of course, it's easy for us to look back with amusement now, but history is filled with theories that have been faulty, fanciful, or flat out false, and sometimes it takes the work of a scientist to help us gather data. Take, for instance, Nobel Prize winning physicist James Watson's theory that blacks are inherently less intelligent than whites. Not only is Watson's theory offensive, he has no empirical evidence to support his idea. Less controversial is the peak oil theory, which argues that oil production will soon peak and go into sharp decline. However, some scientists maintain that the entire theory is based on an inaccurate reading of exactly how much oil is left underground. If the foundation for the theory is wrong, the entire theory falls apart. Rather than revisiting the differences between theories, principles, and concepts, we'll discuss what makes a theory good and why it's important to understand theoretical concepts. According to the text Building Communication Theory, in order for a theory to gain acceptance, it must meet three criteria. Logical consistency, consistency, and testability. A good theory cannot contradict itself. While nature does contain anomalies that can't be explained and make no sense, a good theory is based in solid reasoning and does make sense. A good theory fits well with established facts. We could conclude that our mammoth friend was driven to extinction by the encroachment of man, but no scientific data tells us with complete certainty that is possible. No matter how often it's tested, provided the tests are credible, with a good theory, you'll get the same result every time. Okay, so you all remember this one. Take baking soda and vinegar, mix them together, and instant volcano. And if your ingredients are pure, you'll get the same results every time. Unfortunately, we don't always recognize good theories when we hear them. What? The earth is round? Pithole nonsense! but usually this is due to our personal experiences and prejudices. However, a true theory will survive the test of time. So what is the importance of theories to your life? Nearly everything you studied in college, from writing to algebra, is theory-based, but usually presented in relatively simple terms to help students grasp the basic concepts. But in the real world, the applications of theories is not so obvious. Take, for example, the price of gasoline. How much you paid this morning for gas is based in economic theory. Moreover, how you're reacting to this very video is explained by theories of mass communication. No matter what professional path you pursue after college, your work will not only be affected by the field's fundamental theories, but also by new theories that propel our understanding of the world. In researching the theories that are dominant in your field, your goal shouldn't be to merely understand the theory's basic ideas, but to grasp how using that theory is going to keep you in the game and a valuable employee. Remember that without theories, we wouldn't be exploring outer space. Making advances in curing cancer or predicting the behavior of violent criminals. And who knows? Maybe someday you'll be the one who is creating a new and groundbreaking theory that will advance our understanding of the world. Just make sure 
it doesn't involve monsters.